Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to use this 3D print from the SJE miniature store and I'm going to make a Robocop diorama. As you can see the kit comes complete with a torso, head, left and right arm, left and right leg and a base. I'm going to make my own base because I want something more fitting, something a little bit more realistic. There are a few blemishes on this model created by the 3D printing process. We need to tackle them first before doing anything else. So using a blade and a file I clean up the parts. I'll go through my box of scrap PVC parts so I can create my own custom board. And what I'm planning on making is a landscape full of rubble and rock. So I trim the bait to the size I want. Then I roughly lay out the scrap pieces to where I want them. And then using some PVC cement, I can stick them all down. Luckily, some of these offcuts already have a rocky texture, so it's just a matter of gluing them and sticking them straight on. For the others I need to cut them into the desired shape first, which means adding on some chips and cracks. And this is how it's looking so far, but for now we're going to put it to one side and start building up Robocop. And for that I'm using some gel based super glue. That was a fairly easy assembly because the peg was shaped in such a way that it can only go together in one way. And this is how the fully assembled model looks. Robocop has some pegs under his feet to stick to his little base. Rather than removing them, I'm just going to paint them up and mark out on the new base where they're going to go and then cut out the appropriate hole on the new base. This way the figure will have more stability once it's glued down. As you can see there are three spots marked out where I need to cut. And for this I'm going to use a Dremel, because it means I can cut through very quickly. Now to cover the base in PVA glue for the next step. And then I can sprinkle on a little bit of model sand to add some texture. And then I can help seal this in with some Wall World Scenics sand and gravel fixer. 
to make use of this original base to hold the figure into place while I paint him. So on goes the grey primer. Then the first thing I paint on is the flesh tone for his face, followed by a pink wash for his lips, followed by a little bit of brown wash for the shading. And now it's time to start painting on all the black areas, starting with the jaw piece. Black on its own doesn't stand out well, so it tends to need a dry brush. So I'm using a little bit of white to bring out the highlights. And once the paint fully dries, this effect will be a little bit more subtle. And now it's time to start painting on the metal parts. And for this I use gun metal. I also painted the metal spike. Although in hindsight I needn't have bothered, as I dropped the figure a few minutes later and the spike shot across the room, never to be seen again. And once the metal is all painted, I use this panel lining ink to get the details. All I have to do is tap it on the surface and it seeps into the recesses. While that's drying, I move back onto the base. I mix up some watered down brown and slap it all over. And once that's dried, I mix up another batch but a slightly different shade. And this will add a little bit of variety. While the base is drying, I decided to make a steel girder. So using some scrap PVC board, I cut a strip out and cut it into three sections. This literally only takes me a couple of minutes to make. That's the basic girder completed, just need painting. So I give the girder a coat of steel. Moving back onto the base, I mix up a batch of yellowish brown and dry brush it on randomly over the base. paint a couple of these rocks a different colour. 
These are going to be in grey, like it's some sort of granite. And then I give everything a white dry brush. Including the newly painted granite blocks, and now we can see the edges clearly. And just to finish it off, I add on a couple of different shades of weathering powder just for the soil. This will help add a little bit more colour variation and help the ground appear a bit more natural. All that paint and especially the weathering powder needs sealing in otherwise the colours might run for the next step. And now to finish off that steel girder by adding on some orange rust followed by adding a dark brown using a speckled brush and this will make the rust look much older. Because I'm planning to add some water to this base, I need to cover the edges so the water doesn't spill out. So I create a bit of a seal using some masking tape. Now that's in place, I can add on my steel girder. I have this realistic water stuff from Woodland Scenics. I've never used this stuff before so I'm going to use it sparingly and only on the lower rocks. Using a cotton bud I can put it into all the crevices and this should be just enough to help add some dynamic to the base. And then it needs put into one side for about 24 hours to dry. And then I can add some glue, stick rubber cop in and leave him to set overnight. So the following day I can remove the masking tape, now this diorama is completed.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget, if I can do it, so can you.